What's up everyone? Today we're gonna be whooping some ass in the Elder Dark Ether. That is as the new Dark Ether that came out in season three reloaded. This is actually my first run through it here. We're just gonna be commentating over it. Um, I was playing with the group, so I was commentating with them, so I wasn't actually recording my voice during this whole incident. Um, the new Dark Ether, just a little bit of strategy, is uh, the max amount of people you can get in the game is better. They don't all have to be prepared. Just the more is the merrier. There's the more meat distractions you can use to them. Um, this Elder Dark Ether really isn't all that, um, what I would say, hard to figure out. Everything's pretty easy. You see these golden lights in the background. Those are the pillars you have to go to to activate the contracts. It's not some mystery location with the bunnies this time. Just go to one of them pillars and then interact with it and it actually drops you a, a boost. As in, I believe one of them is a headshot explosion. I believe there's a leg one that is fast. And I actually never went to the third pillar of my team and gotten that one for me through the Outlast contract. As far as the contracts, there is an... There's the uh, bounty contract, then there's going to be a Outlast contract, and then there's going to be an Escort contract. And then there's a little bit of an Easter Egg boss, which is a Disciple, and, and, and where on the middle of the map you shoot all the eggs located on the map, and then you shoot the one egg that is um, broken after you shoot a couple of the eggs, and then that will spawn into the Disciple boss that will give you a chance to get some more loot in the game. Um, I found this one pretty entertaining. I really enjoyed this uh, run for the most part. I really kind of enjoyed the new um, Dark Ether map. It seems like the hell of a lot of zombies, but also even kind of more interesting. It seems there's a lot more bosses, well, elites on the map than there is, you know, usually for these games. So I never have done this really solo yet. I've only done this with a big group, and uh, it made for a lot of entertainment. It was really fun. There's a hell of a lot of zombies, so that's one thing to be considerate of. I mean, if you're going to play in a small groups, I would say just the best strategy is, like always, is, you know, casmers and monkeys to, to throw down while you're, while you're interacting with things or while, you know, things are getting hectic. Or the same thing with the escort again, you can use the VR-11 to keep the health up on the escort if you have a small group and you guys can't, like, uh, maintain focus on not you know, stopping the zombies from hitting it. But other than that, there's really nothing too difficult about this one. I actually I thoroughly enjoy it. The schematics aren't all that great for for say, I guess. But I got three out. I saw I got two out of the three schematics. I got the beret, and I got the um, the dead wire. I didn't I didn't get the golden mask. I've only gotten a um the item to use for the golden mask. I didn't get to that pillar. My team got that one, but that one they're really easy to find. I would say start off just like you seen me in the beginning of the game is just go straight to the, go straight for the one that's in the far distance, for that golden light, and then you, it, it wraps around pretty nicely from doing the bounty, doing the outlast, and then doing the escort. The escort puts you right there on the edge of the island, so then you can hop right there on the edge of the island. The uh, escort was, you know, as usual, an absolute shit ton of zombies. There was nothing but zombies the entire time. Good thing we had Max pulling this round uh, and trying out the F F FJX Force. Um, the gun's pretty good. I was still always considered a Ram 9 over it, but if you want to change the things up or you want to grind out the gun to unlock some stuff for it, it's definitely not a bad deal. Like I said, personally, I don't think it's better than the Ram 9 unless the Ram 9 has gotten some type of nerf recently, which I don't believe it has. But um, they're both worth having around if you want another SMG. I think that's another good SMG to go with if you have a Ram 9 already. But um, the assault rifles with the flamethrower or the chainsaw is a pretty good uh, main these days. I typically like to run the Ram 7 for an assault rifle or even like the M16 I haven't used in a while. But actually there's actually another gun called I think the Latchman 556 and that's actually a pretty decent gun if you get it upgraded and put some attachments on it. It's kind of like one of them sleeper guns just like the M16 is. Yeah but as you see here there's nothing but an absolute crap ton of zombies right here to just about the end. I spawned in my um, I used a beret so I spawned in the, uh, the extra AI it gives you for one of the mercenaries but I didn't, I wasn't paying attention to him too much so I don't really know too much about what he was doing or how he's doing or how good the berets are i would figure the berets the beret guys are kind of just a lesser of the um of the lesser of the dog yeah, i don't think they actually revive you but you know they are another good distraction to have around so if you can't bring a dog bone in and you have the mercenary absolutely why not 
So on the map, you just gotta, like I said earlier, you just gotta run around and shoot all the eggs. There's actually me a, a map linked into the into the last part of the video and in the description of where a map that you can use that's live and you can see everything on the map and you can move around. So I like to have something like open up on my phone as I play on whatever console or PC that you're using so that you can coincide with that because as you, as you know, the dark easier map doesn't tell you where everything is on the map. So for this boss, he's actually just like the um, the story mission where you have to defeat the elite enemies in the area that he spawns in before you can actually do damage to him. As you see, when I try to shoot him a few times, he doesn't take any damage. He can actually still heal you, he can actually still take health from you in this point. So as you see, we can't do any damage to him when his health bar is gray, and he'll actually take the take um, life from one of, one of you or one of your teammates and actually regain his health. So make it vitally important that everyone focuses fire on him when he when, it, when that's down. As you see right here towards the end, we got him in like a little bit of a, a little bit of corner right here. Well, not necessarily a corner, but we were all in a corner, so we could all just focus fire on the zombies who were funneled the outside and messing with the mercenaries. And we were able to take him down in this one time of him dropping a shield. And we did this as you see with 57 seconds on the clock. So he really doesn't take long to kill as long as you have an ample squad. So. Any type of strategy is just like the other ones. You come in as you know buffed up as possible, but the more the merrier, and the more people you have, the less buffed everyone really necessarily needs to be. So, in the end of the games, so make sure you just hit up before you leave. Hey, anyone come? You know, keep that chat going and try to get some teammates. Um, I hope this helped you and just you know quick little show and tell what the new Dark Ether is. It's you know same as the old ones, just a little bit different. And I actually kind of prefer this layout. It makes it more it more more easy and more easy for newcomers to play. And uh, I think it's more enjoyable experience than the the corners that the first Dark Ether provides. You know, I like the first Dark Ether better and the Max are better. But um, thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Peace out.